Algebra 1, this is 7.5 day 2 of exponential functions of the parent family child method. We are now, we talked about parent yesterday and that we need to know its growth, a y-intercept, an asymptote, and an extra point. We are now going to extend that to the family. Okay? So, here's the thing about parents, family, and children. You guys may have recognized this when you go to your own family functions. You walk in or you look at a family photo and you look at that and say, whoa, everybody kind of looks the same. same. There are slight differences, but there are also very many similarities. Would you guys agree with families? Um, and so this is what's going to happen with these graphs. We are going to start off with this complicated looking um, equation. We're going to build to that point. And we're going to say, wait a minute, what's the parent of all of this? What is the root equation, basically, if I take everything away? And that's what we did yesterday. And now today, we're going to start building. And what comes first, multiplication stuff or addition? It's the multiplication. So today we're going to bring back, we're going to bring in multiplication parts. The multiplication parts is the A for us. Okay, we're only going to do things with a vertical stretch or shrink. We are not going to do anything horizontally today. We're going to keep it simple. And so the first thing that we're going to talk about is that, yes, multiplication comes first. So we're going to introduce A. A is our family part, okay? A, our new equation now, oops, our new equation is y equals a times b to the x. Now be very careful. You cannot multiply a times b. That doesn't work that way. b has an exponent. a does not. It has to be the same exponent, and you're never going to have the same exponent in that way. So don't worry about that. So how does A affect your graph? Well, think of it this way. If I put numbers in, remember B is a fixed number, and I square that number, cube it, fourth it, fifth it, right? That number gets bigger. So we've done something with B to the X. And then, if I multiply that answer by 2, what happens to it then? It gets even bigger. And it doesn't matter what the result is from b to the x. If I multiply it by 2, it gets bigger. If I multiply it by 3, it gets bigger. And so, whoa, what happens if I multiply by half? It'll get smaller. Well, guess what, guys? Would you guys agree, from back on the last slide, I'll even back it up here, that any of these, 2 to the x, 5 to the x, bless you, 1 third to the x, those are the functions, right? But all of those are actually equal to what y is. Okay, you following? It's y equals that. So when I go over here back to our equation, well, if b to the x was y, and I multiply it by an a value, y is going to change. I'm changing what the y value is. And that happens to coincide with the fact that if a is bigger than 1, so if I multiply something by something bigger than 1, it gets bigger. If I multiply something by a smaller value than 1, but still positive, so 0 to 1, that value will get smaller. Can you guys picture that? Okay. So the function is either going to get bigger or smaller. Now, if I multiply it by 1, there is no change, right? Right. Okay. So the way we are actually going to talk about this is that if the a value is bigger than 1, we will state that the graph has a vertical stretch by a factor of a. So if a is 2, it's going to have a vertical stretch of 2. Now the reason why we're saying vertical is because the y's are the vertical axis, right? 
And so if I'm doubling something in size, it's getting taller by twice as much. On the flip side of that, if I multiply it by a half, in, that means it actually has a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 over a. So it, this one's a little bit trickier. It's actually got a vertical shrink of a half, or you can say it's being cut in half by you know 2, or it has a vertical shrink of 2. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit trickier. So maybe I, I would just say, whatever that fraction is, we'll just say it's 1 half or one third, or one fourth. So it's a vertical shrink of one fourth. It's one fourth the size of what it was. So we have two options, well, three options. It can get bigger vertically, it can stay the same vertically, or it can shrink vertically. There's also one more. That last one is that if A is negative, all the rest of them, I could care less what A is, like um, if it's a positive or negative number, if there's a negative sign on the front, that only affects the fact that the graph is not going to be opening upwards because it takes all your y values that were positive and now it makes them negative. So instead of being on the top side, it's on the bottom. If they were already negative, now they're on the positive side. We say if a is negative, then the graph is reflected about the x-axis. So what I mean by that, if this point was up here, and I reflect it about the x-axis, now we're down here. And at any point that was up here, right, is now, whoops, matches itself down here. So if our graph was on the top side, it would be reflected onto the bottom over the x-axis, which is right here. I'm going to pause the video. We're going to go to Desmos, and we're going to demonstrate this. Okay, so we kind of did a little bit of Desmos there, showing that the bigger the number of A, you start to stretch it taller. The smaller, it gets like you're shrinking it. And then when it becomes negative, all that negative does is flip it, but it still allows us to either shrink or stretch, but downward. So, as part of this process, guys, we need to describe what's happening... If I start with a parent, which we're going to say is the 2 to the x, which here, right here, they're all base 2, you see that? They're, I'm going to start with y equals 2 to the x. I have three different graphs here. I want you guys to describe in words what's happening to each one of those graphs when we bring in a different a value. Okay? So on part A, it's three, y equals 3 times 2 to the x. What is happening? Let me help you here. The 3 makes it 3 times bigger, right? A is bigger than 1. So this is what we need to use. We need to use this word. Vertical, stretch, by 3. So this one, we would state vertical stretch of 3. Okay, do you guys kind of see the wordage there? I need to see that. Why? Because that word, if you're able to write that, you're telling me, Mr. Contract, I know that when it's 3 times 2 to the x, that means this graph is going to be 3 times taller. So in part B, what would it be? Kathy. Yeah. Vertical shrink of one-fourth. Boom. You guys getting that? So it's not too bad. Okay. Last one. Max? Uh, one. Ooh. It's not a vertical shrink of negative one. It's reflected about the x-axis. 
Thank you. Reflected about x axis, and that is it. Because when a is 1, 1 times something, does it change? No. But the negative does change it, doesn't it? So, here's another rule. If something doesn't change, you don't need to state that nothing changes. Okay? So if you, it's like, if you didn't do something, you don't need to tell someone you didn't do anything. Because no one's asking you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, if, if you didn't, if you're not changing the question, then you just don't, you just state nothingness. There's, there's nothing to talk about. Okay. So we talked about the words here. We now need to make it happen. We need to graph these because these are different looking graphs, like we saw in Desmos, than what the parents were. So here we go. I recopied here. This is the exact same thing. We're going to change the directions so it's not describe. I'm now going to call it graph. Graph each. So maybe even further. Graph each graph from the parent graph. Come on, go. Okay. We're probably not going to get through all of these, but because they all have the same process. So this is my process. I want you to, first of all, find the parent. Well, all of these are the same. What is the parent of this graph? We're just talking about number one right now. What is 2 to the x? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to state that. The parent is y equals 2 to the x. Do you guys know any information about the parent? Uh, hence, you did that last night. What are the three things you need to know? Or five things? Or four things, I guess you would say you need to know. It's growth. It's growth. So that's good to state. We also should state what? It's decay. Or, wait. It, it's not. It's growth. What else thing, other things we do, had to do last night? Maddie? The absence Which is? Um, parents. parents are always? Chuck? Zero. And you need a y-intercept, which is? Zero. One, and because this is growth, you're going to choose an extra point. What would your extra point be? Left side, right side? Right side. So you're going to put what in for x? One. And if I put one in to two to the first power, it is two. You guys had to do that last night. That's actually one of your examples that you guys had to do. At this point... Uh, last night, I would have asked you to graph it. The thing is, I don't want to graph the parent. I want to graph the family equation. This family equation is 3 times 2 to the x. Would you guys agree with this? So this is what we're going to do. You're going to build a bridge. And the bridge is going to bring you to the family. Your family equation is what? Y equals... 3 times 2 to the x. That is the equation we wanted, right? Hey, wait a minute. Why did we build a bridge? I built the bridge so that we would leave a space for you to tell me what's going on. What did we say was going on with this graph? How do I go from the parent to the family? What's the only difference? 3 times larger. we got to put that in better words. We said that was a what? Vertical stretch of three. So I put that right on the bridge. So now someone walking in the door is going to go, oh, there's a vertical stretch of three on this. Now, 
here's the cool thing, is that those pieces of information that we found for the parent, we're going to use those with the fact that it's three times taller here. Now, if I am going to say something gets three times taller, does it affect my left and right movement, a.k.a. your X's? Does it affect anything sideways? When you make a graph, did, it, did we move it left or right anywhere? No. So guess what? All of your X's stay the same. So, I'm going to put on here, I'm going to change the color, I'll change the purple. X is stay same. The X's are staying the same. But here we go, wait a minute. Are the Y's the same? You're getting what? You're getting taller right so what do we do what did we well in Desmos what did we find out that when you, there's a vertical stretch of three all of your y values are what they're three times larger to me that means it's multiplied by three so my y's multiply by three. Okay. Well, here's my first y. My first y was y equals zero. And if I multiply y equals zero by three, what's y? What's three times zero? Still zero. Um, y is one. And one times three is? Three. Three. Y is 2. 2 times 3. Six. Ladies and gentlemen, you now have enough information to draw a graph. Two points and an asymptote. You're done. Which means I just have to graph this. You have an asymptote where y equals 0. It's a dotted line because it's not really part of your graph. I'm going to go to 0, 3. And 1, comma, 6. Can you connect the dots as they fall and approach the asymptote? And you've now just graphed a family equation. Now, does that take some time to set all of that up? Yes. Yes. But when you walk into this room and you see someone doing this, you're able to identify the parent equation. That means I'm taking away the A's, eventually H's and K's, and we're able to then see what the parent is. We can go to the family saying, hey, it's just three times larger, multiplying the y's by three, and now we have that. Any questions? Something that we should get to is the horizontal translation. This is horizontally. If I move something horizontally, which way am I going? Horizontally. Horizontally, left or right on a number line, right? So this is the x-axis. This is moving it left and right. This is the... Hold on. I realized that I had lost two slides on this. So what we'll do, guys, for us, we're going to call this the first part. It doesn't matter which one comes first or second. You're going to do it the same step anyways. Um, we'll call this the first part of the child. The child is where we start to introduce what we call H and K. So this is the H part. 
This is the left or right movement of your graphs. Now, this one is a little bit trickier of the two options for the child. It's because what we're talking about here is we're talking about the exponent being changed. So y equals b to the x minus h is what we're talking about. That's the very generic look to just a horizontal movement. And the thing what you need to look at here is what does this exponent look like? Is it x minus 2? Is it x minus 3? Is it x minus a half? If it is an x minus the h value, here we go, then your graph is moved to the right h units. To the right. But you're like, hey, there's a negative sign. Shouldn't that be moving to the left? It's to the right. But if, so this is right, if you were to see something like x plus h, the graph was moved to the left h units. This one's left. That line that's underneath those, it seems to be that it always does the opposite of the sign that h has in the problem. Okay? So if it's a, pos a negative, I'm actually going right. If it's positive, I'm going left. The reason is, is because this is a formula. And the formula says that it's x minus h. And the only way for the formula to say x minus 2 or x minus 3 is if the 2 was positive or the 3 was positive. Because when you subtract, if, if h was negative, you would have to subtract a negative, which would lead you to seeing a positive. Okay, so we're going to use Desmos for this as well. And so, before we get to Desmos, if I look at this first equation, 2 to the x minus 2 power. We would say, translated, 2 which way? Right. This is translated to right because it's x minus 2. The next one, we would say, translated for because it's x plus 4 left. And the last one is translated to What? Left again. We're now going to go to Desmos and watch it go left and right. So, we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow, and we're going to put it all together.